morning and welcome to Diversathon. It is now Monday the 23rd, which means it is actually day two of Diversathon, but I had a super busy weekend, so I didn't do any reading, so I'm gonna start now. And I'm gonna start with my coziest, favoritest reading situation, which is just staying in bed and reading. The first book on my list to read today is Juliet Takes a Breath, which I've already been reading and really enjoying, so I'm gonna keep going with this one. That's problematic. Does that necessarily mean that the publishing company or the author- Am I still in bed at one minute to noon? Yes, I am. Do I have any plans to get out of bed anytime soon? No, I do not. What's really cool about this book so far is I'm actually learning like a load of really cool shit, but all disguised as just reading a fun story. So like I'm learning about who Lilita Lebron was and I didn't know anything about her and learning what a Banana Republic is. I didn't know that either. One thing that I am really loving is that this book was not written for me. I always notice that the white saviour trope is so offensive and stupid and I know that, but then again, as a white person and a feminist myself, I guess I've been influenced by it and still always want to see myself as somebody who can do great things and unite women of colour and trans women and be a great intersectional feminist. But actually seeing the main character in this, who is very much a white feminist, who is trying to be more inclusive in the same way that I'm trying to learn to be more inclusive, but at the same time when you see her, you just want to shout at her like, just sit down, just stop talking, just let somebody else take the mic, stop trying to be the white hero here and it's just like fucking great to see it dismantled in that way. Okay, so I wasn't intending to stay in bed quite this long. It is now 10 to 5. Whoops. Just finished this book and I bloody loved it. It was so good. I've heard some people say that they thought it was a bit like heavily written, like spells out the issues it's trying to get across and I definitely see that, but I actually really liked it. So I felt like a lot of these issues, I was like, I need this spelled out for me. It's good to have it like this. So I really enjoyed this one. It made me feel so happy at the end. Okay, I am done with work. I did actually get up and shower even though it is now dark outside. I'll be back in bed soon. And I think I'm going to go and watch a series of unfortunate events and then get started on reading Sophia Khan is not obliged. I am already so in love with this main character. She is hilarious. I've heard this book described loads as like a Muslim modern Bridget Jones version and it's so so cliche to compare people to Bridget Jones. Everyone gets compared to Bridget Jones but genuinely she does remind me of Bridget Jones. Like she has the same kind of sense of humour. I'm just loving it. She's so funny. Also her job is a books publicist which is the job that I want to do so this is fascinating. I'm really liking that the main character in this book is doing a really cool balance of pointing out the sexism that she notices and also pointing out the hypocrisy of her white colleagues who are really fixated on the sexism within Islam as if it's this uniquely Muslim thing and that's really hypocritical. So that's really interesting. Good morning, Diversathon! <laughs> Just some thoughts while I'm strolling through the fog. I really want Diversathon for me to be about me challenging my own bullshit assumptions. And Juliet Takes a Breath was really good for that. And then this one, the bullshit assumption that I really need to overturn is the idea that Muslim women are oppressed just by nature of them being Muslim. And that's what Aisha Malik is really challenging here. Because of course, you know, we read about the extremes, we read about honour killings, and then we work that into this narrative that just by nature of believing in the Islam religion that these women are oppressed, which is not true. Obviously, you find that kind of extremism at the edge of every religion, at the edge of every kind of belief system. So that's something that this book's really helping me over time. Continuing that thought, the reason that I thought in particular is because there have been a couple of times reading this book where I've noticed a little bit of internalised misogyny. I notice sexism in books all the time when I'm reading, so it's not like it's unusual, but I just thought it's worth questioning myself. Am I noticing it more because I have this stereotype in my head of the oppressed Muslim woman and is that image playing into my reading of this book? Maybe not, like I said I do notice this stuff a lot anyway, but it's just worth considering. Is that affecting my reading? And if it is, then that's something that I should definitely point out to myself and work on. Especially because the bits of internalised misogyny that I've been noticing, it's been tiny. It's been like a couple of times she used plays on the word ho, or times when she focused too much on her weight or her need to wear makeup and stuff like that. So much less than in Bridget Jones, which I compared this book to yesterday, and yet I was fucking rave about Bridget Jones. I love it. And I managed to turn it into my head into this feminist book, even though I know it isn't, or it's like a very limited type of feminism if it is. So I just think it's worth paying attention to whether I'm giving this book the same free treatment, and if I'm not, if it's because of my own stereotypes. In general, I'm loving the book. It's not like I'm thinking, oh, this book is sexist, I'm really loving it, and it's doing a really good job of tackling sexism most of the time. But yeah, it's just something I thought 
pay attention to. Okay, somehow it is now 11 at night. That was a long day spent in town in the library achieving nothing, really. But now I'm back, snuggling back in bed, we're about to, and I'm gonna keep reading my book. Whoops, it's 10 a.m. and I accidentally slept through my alarm by one whole hour. So I kind of slept through my reading in bedtime. But I think I'm gonna read in bed now anyway. Last night I stayed up too late by mistake because I remembered it was the Diversathon Twitter chat, so I joined in with that. Then I watched YouTube videos for ages, and then I read my book for a few hours. So that's probably why I slept in. I'm gonna read my book now anyway. Something really annoying just happened to me, and I don't know how to explain it without doing the same thing to you. I just went and read an interview with the author about her next book. And it gave me loads of spoilers about what's going to happen. So now the whole time this thing that I'm invested in is happening, I know that that's not what's going to happen at the end. I hope that that didn't spoil anything. Just finished, Sophia Khan is not obliged. And it was delightful. Really enjoyed this one. Only thing I would say about it, seeing as it is Diversathon, so we're talking about these things, is there was quite a lot of fat shaming in it, I noticed. So I didn't enjoy that. But that aside, I really enjoyed this one. It made me smile a lot. So, now to pick my next book. I've been intrigued about Interface ever since the author got in touch with me, so I think I'm going to try this one next. I slept through my alarm uh, again, I don't know what is wrong with me. And then even when I woke up I then just dozed. So it's now 11, so I feel like I don't have time for reading in bed, I have to get up and do stuff with my day. That just sucks. I have so much work that I need to be doing right now, but I'm just having one of those days where my brain is like, no. So I'm just giving up for now, I'm going to eat some cheese and read my book. This book is really funny. So far it's like the circle, but hilarious. Ooh, and it decided to get a little bit dramatic as well. But I'm now gonna go out for a drink, so it'll probably be tomorrow that I next read. I'm so hungover. <laughs> it's like 11 now, and I need to get up. I don't want to. I wanna stay up and read, but I have a seminar soonish, so I have to get up at some point. Ugh. Okay, I'm off to London for the night, I've got a three hour journey, so I'm going to see how far I can get an interface, and I've got the three hour journey back, so just in case, I'm packing the Argonauts as well. Okay, so bringing two books was definitely very ambitious. I kind of forgot that A, I get really car sick when I'm reading on the bus, and B, that I was going to be incredibly hungover, adding to the car sick on the way back, so yeah, I didn't get that much reading done. I'm still working on Interface, still making me laugh a lot. I'm finding the plot like a little bit hard to follow, but I don't think that reflects on the book, I think that just reflects on me. I often find stuff like that hard to follow. There's like quite a lot of technological stuff, and it's like a dystopian future, and they're trying to stage a revolution, which is really interesting. I really like the way she set it up, but I just often struggle to follow this plot. I don't know why. It's like The Circle, which I loved. It's reminded me a lot of The Circle, but it's like a more humorous YA version of The Circle. So after having been incredibly sleepy all day, it is now 1.30am on the last day of Diversathon, and of course I've suddenly got a new win, so I'm going to do some reading now. Okay, good morning. I have a ton of actual work I'm supposed to do today, but I only have one real mission. I'm going to finish this book before the end of Diversathon. Okay, work is just going to have to wait because this book is getting seriously high stakes. And I finished Interface, so that's my third book finished for Diversathon. I liked Interface, I thought it was good fun. It didn't have much exploration or any exploration really at all of the fact the main character was asexual. So that was a little disappointing just for this week because I was excited to hear more about it. It's going to be a trilogy and I think I've just been reading interviews with the author. I think her sexuality is going to be explored more in the later books. It must be great for asexual readers to be able to read this genre, if this is their favourite genre, without them always having to involve the romantic sexual aspect which must feel very unrelatable to those readers. So I think it's really wonderful that books like this exist. I think it's great that the author decides to self-publish. But now I would love to read a book that has a deeper exploration of what asexuality is. There's just half a day of Diversathon left, so I might as well get started on one more book. And I've gone for The Good Immigrant by Nikesh Shukla, because I'm not going to have time to read another whole book, but I can read some of these essays. So it is now 7 o'clock, I've been reading a few of these essays, really enjoying them, I feel like I'm learning so much from them, but I now do have to do some work before it gets too late. So I'm going to call it a night, so that means this is the end of my Diversathon week, I've absolutely loved it, I'm going to keep reading this one definitely, really enjoying it. I feel like I've learned a ton from the books I've read this week, I've asked myself loads of questions this week which has been really interesting, and I'm going to go have a quick look through the Twitter before I start work, I need to work at some point soon. I missed the Twitter chat earlier so I want to see what other people said about it, because I always really enjoy that. So really, really great week and I'm looking forward to next time.